Hello there, I'm a delicious looking fruit lion. Okay, okay, this is a bit of a weird topic, and we're going to keep this video briefer than my other recent ones, because it's harder to do an extended talk about this topic. I'm not the type to trick people or do fake videos, but I did want to do something suitably light-hearted for April Fool's Day, and thus we come to the topic at hand. It goes without saying that this video is going to be weird with a capital W. It is what it is, the people who will like it are who they are, and it's all in good harmless fun no matter what. I strongly suggest getting out of here immediately if you can't see eye to eye with that. With the serious part out of the way, we now come to the silly part, so please enjoy. Here are five games with Vore in them. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen I'll be honest with you, I know very little about this game even after trying to play it. In fact, if it weren't for a certain something, I wouldn't have gotten past the intro sequences, I was getting quite bored. But I toughed it out because waiting for me at the end of one such sequence is this big fella! The Hydra is quite the imposing set piece for his day, coiling around and knocking down towers, but he's most famous for how he attacks the town folk. A quick strike and then tossing them into the air. Regular NPCs are swallowed very quickly, the bulge simply vanishing downwards, never to be seen again. You and your teammates are sent down much slower, however, complete with a wiggling throat bulge of resistance and loud gulp noises. It's especially fun to watch the very last part of this animation, where the bulge vanishes into the main body. So yeah, I didn't want to go any further than this. As far as I'm concerned, this chosen one met his end very early in his quest, and in a rather enviable way, I might add. You gotta wonder what the Hydra gets up to after this. Of course, now we have a sequel coming up. History may repeat itself if that game has a Hydra too. Mario and Luigi – Bowser's Inside Story Can you believe that this game is 15 years old already? It stands the test of time remarkably well. Sure, it can be cheesed a little bit with the special attacks, but it has such satisfying combat that there's nothing wrong with that. But who, oh boy, they chose a doozy of a topic Bowser in this one. After being fed a strange mushroom from long-term antagonist Fawful, Bowser proceeds to inhale everyone in sight. I was never too fond of that term, inhale. They're clearly being swallowed whole, there's even a simple animation dedicated to it. On the outside, you play as Bowser and contend with Fawful and newcomer villain Midbus to prevent the formation of the Dark Star. Meanwhile, the brothers Mario venture around inside Bowser's body, initially just trying to find a way out, but later unknowingly helping him out by amping up his muscles, keeping him hydrated, and even saving him from death itself. It's no secret that this game goes into many odd topics. Growth, inflation, bloating, and of course Bowser talking to someone alive and well in his stomach. Thankfully, the game is more than the sum of these parts, being an outright great game on top of a surreal experience. Goodness knows, with those muscles, Bowser needs a lot more protein than most. Jack and Dexter, The Precursor Legacy This was an outside suggestion that I'm honestly surprised I didn't think of sooner. At the same time, unlike some other entries on this list, it doesn't wear its voorish heart on its sleeve. Nevertheless, the game can catch you off guard with not one, but two iconic vor moments. The first is the more well-known of the two. Jack and Dexter is an open-world platformer that prides itself of being able to go anywhere without a loading screen. Anywhere except the ocean. Here be fish. Yes. Attempt to swim out to the open seas too far, and a lurker shark will pop up promptly to swallow our heroes whole, never to be found in that vast blue. They bear more than a passing resemblance to those fish in Ratchet and Clank that do the exact same thing if the water isn't removed from under them. The other scene is often forgotten, but left a big impact on young me for just how out of nowhere it was. This sentient, rather squashy plant with eyes. Hey, hey. 
if you are left at a single point of health and the plant catches you with his admittedly easy to dodge lunging bite, a special death animation plays where the hero is a swallowed hole complete with a telltale bulge. Yeah, they're dead. Um, surprise! And if you think that's a bit creepy, then wait until you see the next entry. Heart of Darkness. Just the mere mention of this game probably makes you think of one of these videos. And yet, Heart of Darkness has a lot of good things going for it. It's very stylized for its day, and it's an improvement on its predecessor, Another World, in every way, being one of the first video games to use a live orchestral score, too. Have a listen to this lovely intro music. But this game also has one twisted sense for how to treat its protagonist, Andy. Now, to be fair, it's heavily implied that this game takes place in his imagination, as he overcomes his fear of the dark after a bad experience at school. And as children, we often imagine some rather grim things, that's why so many cartoons got so dark. But having his spine Ooh. snapped? Heart of Darkness boasts dozens of unique death animations, but the vast majority of them involve Andy being eaten in some way or another. From the regular shadow minions, who look pleased as punch about winning, mind you, to these wall claw things with brief but clear bulges. But by far the star of the show is this big fat guy, sometimes known as the Shadow Captain, but more affectionately known as Mephudoka. He is introduced in the very first level of the game, where he devours Andy's only means of defense against the Dark Army. Dawdle around him for too long, and he promptly picks up Andy, too. The smile on his face cannot be understated, neither can that big bounce. But should you choose to escape, for some reason, he's far from done. He returns considerably later in the game as a soft landing, when Andy plummets through a hole in the floor on the run from the shadows. At this stage, you can indefinitely stay here and leave Mephidoka very happy, or you can remember that he ate Andy's weapons earlier in the game, and mash the attack button to break free. But why would you want to do the latter? Be honest. Let's get cracking with the honorable mentions already. <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles 2. At first glance, this place doesn't look associated with Vore or being in the stomach at all, aside from some acid here and there. But in actuality, an entire civilization finds themselves thriving in the belly of an enormous whale-like creature called a Titan. And when protagonist Rex and his crew find themselves swallowed alive, they adjust remarkably quickly to the unexpectedly beautiful surroundings with equally beautiful music, almost literally the musical theme of Vore. Castlevania Mirror of Fate this would be far too hard to discuss on the main list, as the series as a whole has never really gelled with me, but, well, just look. Reaver is an anomaly in the series purely for the fact that he can swallow you whole and sets the world record for digestion while he's at it. Allegedly, this boss is very, very challenging, which means many, many, many bones. The Sims 4 Quite a lot of people suggested this one. A long-running staple of the Sims series is the ability to grow these rare man-eating plants after taking care of a cow plant seed for a few nights. Failing to feed your fully grown fella will lure your Sims into its jaws of a cake vine. On some occasions, the plant will spit its unlucky prey out, but sometimes it doesn't. I ended up finding myself utterly hooked to this game while collecting footage, both making a cute life for me and my real partner, and then having us both fed to the same cow plant. I tell you, it was worth every moment, and I'm sure the plant would agree.
Look at this! I mean, um, Star Fox Adventures. Well, now, you can't have a game about dinosaurs without at least a little vor in it, can you? And while Garden here isn't purely a dinosaur, having some insect qualities too, it doesn't stop him from swallowing Fox McCloud multiple times in the same battle, complete with an oddly detailed interior and a very audible gulp as you fight your way out. Although, why is there a uvula in his stomach? Which brings us to the last remaining game on this list. That's bloody ominous. The entire Crash Bandicoot series. What else could it possibly be at the top spot? Literally everyone subscribed to me and in Discord said this. The beloved Crash Bandicoot series has not only blessed us with wonderful platforming and heaps of charm, it's got a whole other level of vore, and that's not even counting some of the later games. From these numerous riverside plants and their huge bulges, to this recent eel captain who clearly had a lot of practice beforehand, the Crash Bandicoot series has all sorts of hungry characters which are just waiting to add Bandicoot to their dietary menu before going about their day with nobody the wiser as to why they're so fat. But you know what this game is doing at number one and so do I. Tiny's Lovely Lions. These guys were so good at what they do that when I was young, I made devoted save files just to come back to them. When I was younger, I just couldn't let any of them go hungry. And now that I'm older, shall we say my tastes have changed? <laughs> Whether you prefer the OG version of Crash Warped or the insane version, the Lions have awakened something in dozens of people. The originals have these long-lasting swallows and flowing bulges that implies a quick digestion, as well as these signed smiles of relief and pride. They did it. They won. Meanwhile, the insane version initially treats things a bit more violently, before tossing Crash upwards and finishing off with a huge bloated stomach and a big burp to finish it off. I love the little wobbles as he pats his stomach. It puts me in the mind of one of the first cartoons I associated with the term vor, with this lion from Hysteria. No matter which one is your favourite though, it's almost guaranteed that more hungry animals will show up in future Crash games. It's inevitable, and he is edible. <laughs>